You can test triangles for congruence in five ways. Knowing as many methods as possible helps you, giving you flexibility to deal with any situation. Today we are going to discuss the angle-angle side, or AAS, theorem. You may find that this is also referred to as the AAS postulate, but don't worry about whether it is a postulate or a theorem, it doesn't change how it works. The AAS theorem says, if two angles and the non-included side of one triangle are congruent to the corresponding parts of another triangle, the triangles are congruent. Notice how it says non-included side, meaning you take two consecutive angles and then move on to the next side in either direction. You do not take the side between those two angles. To demonstrate with actual triangles, here we have triangle GUM and triangle RED. Are they congruent? Notice the little hatch marks that indicate all the congruencies, which in mathematical shorthand uses this symbol. As you can see, the congruent parts are angle G is congruent to angle R, angle M is congruent to angle D, and side GU is congruent to side RE. We know from looking at these triangles that two interior angles are congruent and consecutive, meaning they are next to each other, but we know nothing about the side between them. Instead, we know that another side is congruent. Going through our toolbox full of triangle congruence testing methods, we can try each. Side, 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 SSS. That won't work because we do not know about all three sides. Side, angle, side, SAS. That won't work either because we know two angles, not two sides. Angle, side, angle, ASA. This looks promising at first, but the side we know about is not an included side, so not this one. Hypotenuse leg, HL. This is reserved for right triangles, which we don't have, so not this one. Angle, angle, side, AAS. Yes, this is the one, the only one that we can use. Why does the AAS theorem work? Angle angle side theorem works because all the interior angles of all triangles add up 180 degrees. So if you know two angles of a triangle, then you know how to find the third angle of a triangle. Here is the formula. 180 degrees minus angle G minus angle M equals angle U. Solving for angle U now gives you two angles with an included side. So where once we had angle angle side, we scooted around the triangle and turned it into angle side angle, which is already a postulate. If two angles and their included side of one triangle are all congruent to two corresponding angles and their included side of another triangle, the two triangles are congruent. Let's look at an AAS theorem example. Here we have two new triangles triangle LEG and triangle ARM. Notice all the little hatch marks indicating congruent angles and sides. Angle L is congruent to angle A. Angle E is congruent to angle R. Side LG is congruent to side AM. Knowing the interior angles are congruent as listed, what else do we know? That's right. We know angle G is congruent to angle M because 180 degrees minus angle L minus angle E equals angle G, and 180 degrees minus angle A minus angle R equal angle M. Therefore, angle G is congruent to angle M. Now you can deploy ASA postulate and declare the two triangles congruent since angle L is congruent to angle A and side LG is congruent to side AM, and angle G is congruent to angle M. In reality, we have no need of proving the third angle's congruence and then deploying ASA, since we have, ready and waiting, the AAS theorem. So real mathematicians and geometricians just leap right to AAS and declare the two triangles congruent. That's it. You now know how and when to apply the angle-angle side or AAS theorem. You also know how to make the connection between AAS and ASA theorem and 
perhaps most helpful of all, you know how to explain to someone else how AAS helps to determine congruence in triangles.